Hello and welcome to... Welcome to the first of two introductions for today's review of the Aquatico Sea Star 300. I've never done this before. The reason is I recorded the review last week and the price of the watch last week was $299. Aquatico have got a summer sale on, they've just dropped 20% off that price, which takes it down to $239 shipped. Now, the things I go on to say about the watch remain the same. I really like some elements of this Aquatico Sea Star, and I really don't like some other elements, and that doesn't change. However, I'm prepared to forgive a lot more of a $239 watch than I was of a $299 watch. So if you're watching this one, click on the link, check the price and make your own judgments accordingly. If you miss out on the summer sale, then hey, just pretend you didn't see me. Let's flip, no. Let's do one of those transitiony things and get on with the second intro. Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of the Aquatico Sea Star 300. There it is, spinning away behind me in the boxy winders. Now it is called the 300 because it is a 300 meter dive watch. It also happens to cost 300 US dollars shipped. Now that means the watch falls into what I think is my favorite little sub-genre, my favorite little sub-category of all the watches that I review on the channel. $300 dive watches. I think if you're prepared to spend the extra, if you're prepared to step up and pay $100 more than an Orient Mako or a Seiko SKX, you are amply rewarded. You generally get a much better set of specifications, including sapphire crystal, the occasional high beat Japanese automatic movement, solid end links, build clasps, etc, etc. I've looked at some fantastic $300 dive watches already this year, having some or all of those features, including, but not limited to, the Helm Brothers, the Vanuatu, and the Kuraburi. I reviewed the Richard Legrand Odyssey 2, a really classy looking desk diver, and the new Phoebus PY007 Submariner homage that does indeed feature one of those high beat Japanese automatic Miyota 9015 movements. So if you're gonna launch a model at this price point in that sector, you better come out swinging because there are already some heavyweight contenders out there waiting for you. Is this Aquatico then the new king of the hill? Can it outslug all its opponents? I find this watch really, really frustrating. I think that it does some of what it does better than any of the watches that I've already mentioned. However, I think there are a number of key areas where this watch falls short. Let's flip the camera and find out where the source of my frustration lies. What am I going to do with this rather frustrating watch today then? Well, I thought I would rattle through dimensions and specifications to begin with, and then I would talk about one thing I really like about this watch, then one thing I don't really like about this watch. There is a lot of positive here, there is a lot to like, I'm just frustrated that Aquatico didn't see it through to its conclusion, didn't polish the rough edges off this watch. I think they would have a fantastic watch on their hands if they did. So let's talk about price. I already mentioned it in the intro, $299. And that gets you a one year warranty and one of those rather nice Crafter Blue Isofrain style rubber straps. I'll show you that one a little later on. It also gets you something that looks quite a bit like a Tudor. So are we calling it an homage today then? Well, I'll pop up a picture of the Black Bay I don't really think so. Certainly the case shape is much thinner. This watch wears a damn sight better than a Black Bay. I'll talk about that a little later on. I will also pop up a picture of the new Black Bay GMT. I think that's a kind of visual cue there. Certainly a reference that split 50-50 Pepsi colored bezel, definitely more akin to the GMT. And if you're gonna put snowflake hands on a watch, then obviously there's a, a strong, heavy Tudor reference in there. I wouldn't necessarily call it an homage, but certainly they have taken a number of styling cues from Tudor, which I don't think is a particularly bad thing. So 42 millimeters in diameter. We have got a thickness of 12.8, so under 13 mil thick, lug tip to lug tip of just under 50, but as you can see there, we've got drilled lugs, an unexpected bonus, bringing that lug width effectively into about 48 millimeters. 22 millimeter lug width today, tapering down to 20 and back up to 22 on the clasp. This one sized up for my Joe Average seven inch wrist 
coming in at 165 grams. We have got 316 sale stainless steel construction, case, bezel, crown, and full stainless steel bracelet. We have also got sapphire crystal, 120 click, unidirectional rotating dive time bezel with an aluminium insert. And as you can see there, we've got a screw down case pack, 300 meters of water resistance, solid end links, and a nice milled clasp. The Aquatico is powered by the ubiquitous Seiko NH35 movement. Pop up the movement accuracy report there. This one's settling into around minus seven. Uh, these are rock solid movements, 24 joule hack hand wind, 42 hour power reserve, rugged, reliable, and justifiably a choice for most of the watches that I've discussed in the intro at this price point feature that Seiko NH35. So nothing positive or negative there, pretty much straight down the line in terms of movement choice. But overall, a pretty decent set of specifications, especially when you consider the addition of a second strap as part of the package. Let's start with the positive then. Look at that finishing. It is so well machined. This whole watch is just gorgeous. Look at the brushing on the side of the mid case. Just perfect. That lovely little polished chamfered edge there. Look at the way that the machining has been done on the bezel. Very, very nice indeed. A little bit of a chamfered edge, a little bit of a beveled edge on the bezel itself. Also, mid links fit nice and flush to the case. Just great finishing throughout. Really does feel like a, a watch from a division or two above this one. Excellent, excellent finishing at $300. The small crown, however, is my first moan of the day. Feels a little bit rough when compared to the rest of the watch and could certainly be doing with a, a little more protrusion there. It's not all that easy to grip in reality. Could certainly be a, another mil or two thicker and probably a mil or two wider as well. I think that would balance the, the overall look of the watch. I understand unguarded crowns, they've gone for that Tudor kind of vintage aesthetic, but certainly could have been larger. Next positive, the bracelet. Again, the finishing on it is beautiful. These are nice, thick, solid links, and as you can see there, screw links, not all that prevalent at this price point. Always a bit of a bonus to see that. It's got just about enough flex to give it a bit of comfort, but the finishing on it is just gorgeous. Very, very nice indeed. And the fact that the mid link of the end link is a half link rather than a protruding link means this watch wears very nicely indeed. I'll show you that shortly. However, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking about the clasp. On paper, it looks okay. You've got a, a bit of micro adjustment and it is a milk clasp. However, there's no recess. You're gonna have to get your finger underneath this safety clasp, your finger nail underneath the safety clasp. See if you bite your nails, you should probably stop. But if you bite your nails, you're gonna have to get someone else to take your watch off for you, or you're gonna be wearing it for a couple of weeks and allowing your nails to grow. Bit of a silly decision by Aquatico, not putting a recess under that clasp, allowing easy access. Et voila, the Seiko Sea Urchin with a nice clasp so you can get under it there. Seiko not exactly renowned for producing high quality bracelets on their low end models. If they can manage it, so can you Aquatico. And then there's that bezel, as mentioned, 120 click, unidirectional, rock solid, no back play at all there, and beautifully machined. However, the aluminium insert looks cheap. Think SKX009 and then add a little bit of cheap. Now two of the watches I mentioned in the intro had ceramic bezels, the other two have sapphire bezels. I'm not particularly complaining about the fact that it is aluminium, just the fact that it doesn't look all that nice at all. There's that kind of circular, granular effect underneath there, just looks pretty poor. And pop a link and we're onto the case back then. Nice, solid end length, screw down, just advertising 300 meters, sapphire crystal automatic, etc. But what on earth is that in the middle? I'll tell you what it is. It's a mermaid riding a dolphin. That looks like something that you should see on Tattoo Nightmares. I wanted like a mermaid riding a dolphin, but I only had 20 bucks and the guy said he was just starting out and he'd do me a deal. And the sapphire crystal that Aquatico has chosen for this is cracking. Looks to me like they've gone for a flat crystal on top, but with an internal dome. So you get that lovely full dial distortion at the edges of the viewing angle. I'm a bit of a sucker for a nice distortion on top of a dial. And this watch certainly has that good choice on the glass. And then there's the Loom BGW9, which in theory gives you that lovely 
ice cold white blue color and the big indices and those snowflake hands allow plenty of it. However, there just isn't enough of it. There haven't been enough layers applied and it fades all too quickly, which is a real shame. In fact, all of these negatives described previously are a real shame because this watch wears magnificently. It really does hug the wrist beautifully. How many Seiko NH35 powered watches have I uncovered at under 13 millimeters thick? Not very many, and this one wears better than any of them, I think. As mentioned, the fact that the mid link of the end link is a half link, if you see what I mean, means it curves instantly on the wrist. Feels lovely as well, just gorgeous. Shame there are so many moans and niggles to this point. And zoomed out a little further for perspective. As also mentioned, it wears a damn sight better than the couple of Tudor Black Bays that I've spent time with. This one distributes its weight much, much better. Thinner on the sides generally wears pretty well and wears very well indeed for a 42. 42 usually a little large for me, but this one just looks great. So can you understand where I'm coming from with this one then? A frustrating watch indeed. I think it's a handsome big thing. I think it is fantastically well made in the main and it wears beautifully, really feels great on the wrist. However, a number of moans and niggles today, the bezel insert, the dodgy case back I can forgive, the clasp however is a real neg for me, slightly small crown also, and perhaps they could have done with a few more applications of BGW9 loom. Nice package, well specced at 299, love the addition of the extra strap, but just a couple too many niggles and moans today for me to give this one two thumbs up. So there you have it then, the Aquatico Sea Star 300. Please, Aquatico, revise this model. Make the changes that I'm suggesting and I think you will have an absolutely stunning watch on your hands. But at the moment, that bezel insert and the clasp specifically, then we've got the loom and that slightly small crown. Really bring this watch from a potential nine and a half out of 10 back to about a six or a seven. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.